I realized just how huge a lie the party leaders told. A decree number 12 stated that on the 12th of May 1986, 10,198 people had already been hospitalized, 345 showed signs of radio lesions. Yet at the same time, they were telling us everything was fine, that it was nothing serious, and I realized the scope of the lies. According to Allah, another passage reveals that authorities had arbitrarily changed the standards. Multiplying by five what was considered the acceptable dose of radiation for the human body. When they raised the standard, suddenly people were miraculously cured. They were released from the hospital and sent home. It was criminal. The tendency to manipulate the numbers was not unique to the Soviets. In late August 1986, the first international conference assessing Chernobyl took place behind closed doors. It was presided over by Hans Blix. No journalists or outside observers were admitted into the amphitheater. The Russian delegation was led by Legasov, the man who'd been in charge of the governmental commission during the Battle of Chernobyl. When we put him in charge of preparing the report for the IAEA, we gave him the duty of reporting everything. He came up with a very detailed report that put everybody in a state of shock. Legasov spoke for three hours. His report concluded that in the decades to come, about 40,000 deaths from cancer caused by Chernobyl were to be expected. The Western world refused flat out to accept this estimate, which spurred a genuine East-West negotiation. These are theoretical calculations based upon the Hiroshima model that you say that if you have a certain radioactivity, you know from Hiroshima that the long-term effect was so and so many would, uh, would die from it. And if you then increase it by tenfold, you assume that it will be tenfold. Well, that's the calculation. Um, this is not, I think, an exact, this is not empiric. There again, the figures were surprisingly flexible. By the end of the conference, people were no longer talking about 40,000, but rather of 4,000 probable deaths. Nearly 20 years later, in September 2005, this figure became the official death toll of the disaster. The staunchest opponents to the Soviets' policy of transparency were the French, who went as far as to deny that the radioactive cloud passed over their country. Est-ce qu'on a constaté quelque chose au-dessus de la France? Non, parce que les vents ne vont pas dans cette direction. Là, les vents tournent dans le sens inverse des lignes du nord. Il n'y a pas lieu du tout de s'inquiéter. C'est sans aucun danger pour la santé publique. Twenty years later, in France, and especially in Corsica. Cases of thyroid cancer of the same nature and severity as those around Chernobyl are being reported. The most dangerous element that came out of the Chernobyl reactor wasn't cesium or plutonium, but lies. The lie of 86, that's what I call it. A lie that was propagated like the radioactivity throughout the whole country and the entire world. On the 27th of April 1988, the second anniversary of the disaster, Legasov, who'd worked so hard to unveil the entire truth, decided to put an end to his life. Today, as perfect metaphors of the institutionalized lie, the radioactive particles hurled from the reactor in the explosion continue to poison the land. 20 years after the disaster, the area of Chernobyl remains uninhabitable. In five years, the radionuclides sink five centimeters into the contaminated soil. So, 20 years later, they're 20 centimeters under the ground. They continue to contaminate all the plants. 
To clean it up, we'd need to remove 20 centimeters of soil and seal it underground in burial sites. And that's too big of a job to do. It's impossible. Today, 8 million people live in contaminated areas of the Ukraine, Russia, and especially Belarusia. For 20 years, they've lived off the radioactive food that continues to contaminate them little by little. This issue, raised in 1986 by the Soviet delegation at the Vienna Conference, has been systematically ignored. And yet, 1,152 children were treated for thyroid cancer between 1986 and 2002 at a specialized center in Minsk. How many in other cities? No global statistics have yet been made public. One doctor, Yuri Bandayevsky, has been studying illnesses among the populations in the contaminated areas ever since the disaster. When his findings were published in 1996, they were immediately condemned. Arrested and officially sentenced for corruption, he spent the next five years in jail. In November 2005, he was still under house arrest. Look what happened when the mother was contaminated with cesium during pregnancy in one single family. Look how many deformations, hair lip, missing eyes, deformed skulls. These embryos come from hamsters that were fed only contaminated grass from the region of Gomel. The result? Entire litters of deformed animals. I was horrified by how many deformed embryos developed in animals that had eaten cesium-contaminated food. I obtained a horrible number of deformations in two weeks. Usually, when you encounter a monster, you describe it. You're certainly familiar with Peter the Great's Kunstkamera Museum in St. Petersburg. Quite frankly, I myself could create as many monsters as I wanted. There's been no official study of genetic mutations stemming from Chernobyl. Yet despite the thousands of miscarriages and abortions that took place following the disaster, there seems to be hundreds of children who suffer the effects of radiation. The defamations we see among these children are similar to those of Bandayevsky's hamsters. In Belarusia, 300,000 children are currently suffering the consequences of contamination. NGOs like the International Green Cross, founded by Gorbachev after he was sidelined from the government in 1991, have opened treatment and support centers for victims of Chernobyl. They also organized therapeutic camps, aiming to teach the new generations in contaminated areas how to live with radioactivity. Like here, testing the contamination of their food. How many years is this going to go on? 800 years? 800 years! Until the second Jesus Christ is born? Until his return? Yes. Chernobyl played an important role for us all. And of course, we must keep searching and not skimp on millions. We must strengthen international cooperation and create international scientific centers to find new sources of energy which are safer. That's the essential issue. I wouldn't wish for anyone, not my friends or my enemies, to experience such a tragedy. No one deserves to live through what we did in Chernobyl. We're all human beings, and no one deserves that. In the heart of the zone, 10 kilometers from the nuclear power plant, and hidden in the forest, lies Chernobyl II. Twenty years ago, no one could get near this huge military radar. Moscow's hidden eye meant to spot American missiles. The fact it was put out of service after the explosion tallies with what the Chernobyl accident seemed to foreshadow 